recording. Welcome to Inspirational Journeys, everyone. My name is Ann Harrison, and with me today, I have my special guests, one of whom is my audiobook narrator, and one of whom collaborates with her. L welcome to Lillian Eves and Vincent Lee Grayson. Thank you very much. Hi, thank you. Nice to be here. So, first of all, I'm a little ladies first. Lily, tell me a little about yourself. Um, I am originally from Owasso, Oklahoma. Uh, I went to school in New York City, and then I ended up in California. So I tell people I'm from the east, west, and somewhere in the middle. So. <laughs> yeah. Great. I mean, Vincent, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no, either way. Yeah, we go by both names, actually. Yeah. Okay. Happy to answer to both. Um, well, my story isn't as interesting as Lily's. I was born and raised in rural Pennsylvania, a little town called Chambersburg. Nobody's ever heard of unless they're Civil War buffs. Uh, I went to undergrad at Penn State University in uh, State College, PA. And I moved to California in 2001 to pursue a voiceover career, funnily enough. But um, it didn't happen right away. <laughs> So what inspired you guys to get into voiceover? Um, I, I originally went to school in New York for musical theater. It was mm -hmm. an accelerated program at an academy, uh, the American Musical and Dramatic Academy, to just go into musical theater. And uh, I ended up coming out to California. And there's not a lot of musical theater in California, but I was doing a bunch of different plays and things. And uh, I wrote a novel uh, called Yonder. And then I couldn't imagine anybody else doing the audiobook. And I kept on joking that I was going to do the audiobook. And then I did. And then once it came out, um, Warren Adler, who wrote, who wrote uh, The War of the Roses, contacted me to do a couple of his books. And then after that, the work just never stopped coming and I realized that I absolutely adore audio so kind of musical theater is a lot about your voice but so is audiobooks so it's been um, a fantastic journey really and it keeps evolving uh, <laughs> well, and then for me there's a couple of versions of this story uh, the cute fairy tale but it's a hundred percent true I promise uh, when I was four or five years old and my family was taking road trips uh, we would listen to audiobooks or uh, collections of Lake Wobegon Tales by Garrison Keillor. Sometimes we'd also listen to tapes of old radio shows and all of these things I just loved as a kid. And it, my parents were pretty happy because it kept me from being obnoxious for these six, seven, eight hour drives. Um, when I was five years old, I boldly declared that someday I will narrate audiobooks. And my mom thought that was adorable. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then you flash forward a few years and it actually bore out. Um, sort of like Lily, when I was in college, I was primarily focused on stage work. I had a vague passing interest in film work. But it was not my passion. And then my sophomore year of college, I was watching cartoons as college students are wont to do. And I had an epiphany moment. These are actors. Actors are hired to voice these characters that's their job. That's what they do for a living. And the, the sort of the dirty little poorly kept secret of the entertainment industry is what you get cast as generally has a lot to do with how you look. Uh, and even more importantly than that, how other people see you. And so it can be complicated to try and go after roles if you're not on the same page as the people who are making those casting decisions. With voiceover, all of that goes sailing out the window and it really is just about the performance. And so this lit a fire in, un, uh, under me and I was excited and that, by golly, that was what I was going to do. I was going to go to California and I was going to be a voiceover actor. Well, and like, who doesn't want to play all the characters? <laughs> so when you're doing audiobooks, you're playing all of the characters. And I also, um, like maybe 14, 15 years ago, I did a Star Wars fan film that I was hired out to do and there was a song in it and one of the girls was sick. And they pulled me aside and then they said, we need you to do two different singing voices and sound like somebody else. <laughs> and so I did. And when the film actually premiered, um, I was telling people like, no, no, I sang that part too. They were so surprised. And I was like, maybe I'm better at voice than I thought I was. That was like just the beginning. I guess everything kind of happens organically in this industry. Um, yep. like we, uh, us meeting, I mean, a play 
And once we found out that we both were audiobook narrators, that's kind of what what organically evolved into uh, the partnership that we have. So. Oh wow! So did you have to have like voice lessons, voiceover uh, lessons, or coaching? Well, it's funny. Um, <laughs> two of us represent two very <laughs> different approaches to audiobook narration <laughs> and voiceover in general. One of us, and I won't say which one, essentially self-taught, uh, learned on the go, <laughs> and built up a skill set without really any outside assistance whatsoever. The other one of us had the benefit of classes and teachers who were focused specifically on voiceover in general and audiobook narration in particular. And so between the two of us, we have both the self-taught and the book mm -hmm. learning covered. It's I, part of what makes our partnership I, so I, good. I also will say that going to the academy, which focused on voice a lot, is very beneficial. So I was more self-taught, but I was always a working actor. So And you, you gave it away. I'm, I'm pretty sure my facial expressions gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what can I do? I was uh, self-taught being when I got the microphone and the programs of how to do it. But a lot of people that don't know, my husband is a sound guy, so he helped me in the beginning to kind of get started, but then from there I was on my own. So I had a very kind of rebel without a cause approach to audiobooks, whereas he was more refined. Um, <laughs> we, we've melded somewhere in the middle. Well, all I can say is it kind of helps. Uh, Graydon, what, I'm, what I was going to say is it kind of helps when you have somebody who has the, 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 the technical skills versus d not, not just the, and, and you have the more refined skills of the voice, the voiceover book learning, book, book sense behind you. Yeah, he is, he is a whiz at, at technical stuff for sure. Oh, Why, well, thank oh. you. It, it all plays a part. That's the thing. Um, as much as we, we do tease each other about our different approaches, and this is more important than that, and no, we have to focus on this part. The reality is that there's no right way to make a perfect audiobook. There is no perfect audiobook. There is no right way. The best way to make a given audiobook is to figure out what the needs of that book are, the needs of that client are, the characters, the, the whatever whatever the pieces of it are. You have to take it a whole then take it apart and figure out how to go about it and it's also a big side to business business is incredibly important in audio like your, your marketing your representation the way that you keep in touch with your client a lot of things that are, that are actually going on behind the scenes which you'd think that just audiobook is just voice work but it doesn't stop with voice work it goes far beyond that yeah. the, so. the truth of the matter is that a lot of that is not terribly glamorous but that doesn't make it any less important mm -hmm. Editing audio is also not terribly glamorous, but no matter how good we may be, nobody wants our raw recordings. No. <laughs> <laughs> we have so many mess ups and laughs and different things that happen in the studio, like when you get tongue tied and things, but um, we don't typically leave those in the audio books. <laughs> no, those are, those are either for distribution to fans so that they can get a chuckle or for nobody because they are humiliating. <laughs> no, I guess that's what makes audiobooks different from podcasts because with podcasts, and I've had to, like when I do my solos, I have to start and stop a couple of times because I don't know how mm -hmm. to do the audio editing. But a lot of times when I do these interviews, they're unscripted because I like the mm -hmm. engagement in the conversation. And mm -hmm. pardon me, Graydon, but I'm going to turn to something just a second. Uh, Lily, you're a writer too, yeah. right? Yes, yes, I am. So I have to ask you, what inspired you to become a writer? Um, I, when I was in high school, I had taken this creative writing class and it just blew my mind. I, I was obsessed with it. I wrote all the time. And I'd been writing before that, but I just had never really been like in an element where I was being taught all the different variations and, and different things you can do with it. Um, but then I flash forward to me working in California. I was working at uh, this job in a warehouse for a bunch of bands. Um, and my, my customer service guy, I was, I was doing logistics and he was in customer service, was a writer. And I had been in this dinner theater for five years. That was a, a noir kind of style. And the director said to me, like, I'd really be interested to know what happened after this play ends. And I went home and I wrote a 14 per page version of what happened. And I took it to my customer service guy and he said, this is so good. We should write a, we should write a novel. And I said, sure. 
And within the year, we had written an 80,000 word novel um, that came out called Ghost Light. And then we kept writing. Then we wrote uh, the book called Yonder that I mentioned earlier. It's a Southern haunting. And then we wrote a book called Hereafter. And then I thought, maybe I should write a kid's book. So I wrote a kid's book called uh, All Things I Can Do, uh, which is a play on, on the verse that I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. Mm -hmm. uh, I really enjoy writing. Like it's, it's a big passion of mine. Uh, and I found audiobooks. And so now writing is kind of like a hobby, whereas the audiobooks is kind of a career. But I do love writing. I, I love that feeling when you sit down and kind of muses with you or like you're almost channeling something and there's this story coming out and the characters do things that you didn't even know were coming like oh yeah wonderful so <clears throat> which i absolutely loved the audio production of all things i can do oh yeah we had so much fun with that yeah it was really a joy so uh graydon have you done any writing or not i, I have um i actually i, I come really mentioned earlier that things happen organically and I have to say that I come by things honestly but sometimes in very roundabout ways. Mm. Uh, a few years ago I was working on the audiobook version of a short story anthology and uh, one day I didn't feel like recording, I didn't feel like editing, so I just sat down and wrote a short story. I had no idea what to do with it at that point. <laughs> and so I sent it to the editor of, uh, of that collection and I said hey um so I didn't get any work done today, but I wrote this. Is it any good? And he said, yeah, actually, this is pretty good. What are you going to do with it? And I said, I, I don't know. You're the publisher. You tell me. Uh, and he put it in that short story collection. So it's very sort of meta, but I got to, I wrote a story that wound up in a collection of short stories that I was duet narrating with another uh, duet partner of mine. Um, and that story was about the art of creating audiobooks. So it was very, very <laughs> meta, but it was a lot of fun. Um, and I have, since then, I have uh, a number of stories that are, uh, one story that just needs a solid editing polish pass and then it's ready to go. I have a few other stories that are partially written. I have a number of other um, skeletons of stories or outlines. Uh, there's also a top secret project no i think you can tell can we? okay yeah we, we you know you can be the one that gets the news first all right okay there's two top uh -oh. secret projects in which we're talking uh -oh. about okay i'm gonna tell you about one <laughs> of the top go, secret and projects and i'll do the other one and we'll see if this is the one that that lily was referring to um lily and i started uh this year doing a number of the uh, nyc midnight fiction writing challenges and one of the entries, I think you wrote it. Yeah, the, <laughs> the, the stop sign. Yeah, yeah. there was a, an entry that Lily wrote for the hundred word? Thousand word. Thousand word challenge, yeah. Thousand word challenge uh, that we just thought was adorable. And uh, so we, at some, we are in the process of, and this is, we'll explain why in a second, it's gonna be a long-term project, but we're in the process of expanding that thousand word novel or a thousand word story into a full length novel with alternating POV chapters, oh. um, yeah. which is, and it's, a, it, it's fun to do, but here is the catch. As an acting student, my, my professors always told me that theater is a jealous mistress, right? It does not countenance you spending much time with other, other uh, interests. Well, if theater is a jealous mistress, I don't know how to describe audiobook production. Um, no idea. At the end of the day, it does not share at all. <laughs> um, we are blessed to have more work than we know what to do with right now when it comes to creating audiobooks. But what that means is a lot of other things that would normally get a little bit of time here, a little bit of time there, we don't get to address them uh, as frequently as we would like. Can I go? Can I tell my second, the other secret? I don't know what the other secret is. This this scares me. I, I'm not sure where she's where she's going with this. One thing we had in common we didn't know. When we met, he was telling me about letters. Oh yes, yes. He has. Um, well, I mean, you can say where the letters are from because I don't want to yeah. mess it up. Um, so I I have a box uh, a big box of letters that my maternal grandfather wrote from the front during World War II. He was uh, stationed in Europe, uh, and he wrote my grandmother uh, close to daily, mm -hmm. and she kept all of these letters. Uh, and 
I am in the process of getting, of organizing them. It, there's just so many. It is unbelievable. I, I spent a full eight hour day, and mostly organized his 1945 letters. So it's, it's going to take a little bit more time to finish organizing everything. But I, I mentioned this in conversation to Lily, actually happened in the other order. You mentioned you. Oh yeah. I think I went first. I don't remember. Um, because I have all of the letters my grandmother sent my grandfather during World War II. But she was from the South. So it's very Southern, very kind of spicy, fun letters. I think at one point she talks about how she's like, well, I don't know how she could marry him. He's an awful cook. And then she'd be like, good Lord, I don't know. Like, I love the way that she words it. So I was describing these letters I had. And and he started talking about his letters. And I was like, we should put those into a book and then an audio book. That's extremely close to what happened. <laughs> and you had told me about your letters ages ago. Mm -hmm. And then when I found out about my letters, my mom just brought them up in conversation at random one day. I, I called Lily because we spend a lot of time figuring out what we're doing. And I said, you're not going to believe this. And I told her about my letters. And then I believe your exact words were, are you about to say what I'm thinking? And I said, probably. I have letters from my grandfather. You have letters from your grandmother. We should organize this into a book. Mm -hmm. and then an audio book. And actually, um, uh, the other books that I, I had co-wrote, uh, Ghost Light and Yonder and Hereafter, all take place between the 20s and up to the middle 40s. Uh, two of them really going around like right before World War II and going into it. So it's an era that I, I had spent probably months just researching just to be able to write those books. So I'm sure we're going to pepper in other facts and stuff. But I think it's going to be I think something so special because it's us reading our grandparents. So we don't have a title yet, but we'll definitely let you know. That's yeah, that's the other secret project. Um, I mean, shh, don't tell. <laughs> that's right. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oopsie, sorry. Well, Your viewers can keep a secret. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's hope so anyway. So do you, from both sides, I'm going to ask about the writer side first. Do you have any tips for aspiring authors, either one of you? Um, I always, I, I don't normally, and this is, I know it changes per writer. I don't plot a lot of the time. I, I have ideas of what's coming, but I, I like to surprise myself as to where it's coming. I think it was Ray Bradbury that talks about just, just letting it, like, if, I think if I, if I hit a wall when writing, I'll sleep on it. Because typically, like the subconscious is doing something that you don't, you're not even aware of. I wake up and go, "Oh yeah, no, that's exactly what happens." And and yonder, um, it, it's a it's a it's like a it's a cutesy paranormal story. It's not like scary. Uh, the lead character Isabel is haunted by this little boy named Eli, and me and my co-author just wrote and wrote and wrote and wrote, and we never knew who the ghost was. But then when I actually presented who it was, I was like, oh, that completely made sense. It was like, we had been writing that way the whole time. But, uh, but with writing, I think it, the hardest part of, of writing is, is actually writing. But so the, that's the biggest step is if you can get up and just make yourself write, like you can always edit it later. Um, yeah, it, it just getting used to the habit and the flow. Cause like, I miss it. There are days I wake up when I really miss writing. Uh, so it becomes part of you. Yeah, I, I think that's that's about right. Uh, do it. Just put pen to paper or finger to keyboard. And even if what's coming out isn't exactly what you thought you were sitting down to type or to write, uh, worry about that part later. Um, I, I have found, and granted, I have not written nearly as many words uh, as Lily. But I have found that something usually falls out of me if I, if I just open myself up to the time and the place of writing. Uh, I don't, I, I, I haven't had the experience. In fact, a couple of years ago, I started a NaNoWriMo, uh, NaNoWriMo, NaNoWriMo? NaNoWriMo. Yeah, I, I, I did a NaNoWriMo and I was, I was doing pretty well and I was pretty happy with what I was doing. And then um, I was uh, a, a contract worker at the time and the, the guy that I was working for said, hey, I've got 500 hours worth of work for you to do in the next two weeks. And I went, well, so long, NaNoWriMo, it was, it was good knowing you. Mm -hmm. um, I never had a problem sitting down and, and coming up with a valuable 
thousand or fifteen hundred words from day to day. That mm -hmm. wasn't as long as I as long as I did it, as long as I sat down to do it, it would happen. Um, if I made excuses, which happened mm -hmm. even before that work <laughs> showed up, uh, if I was hungry, it, it was funny because I am terrible about uh, physical fitness on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I don't tend to I don't tend to do it. I tend to think about it. I don't tend to do it. NaNoWriMo was the one thing that got me on a regular fitness schedule because I, I told myself that I had to do my fitness before I could write. And boy, howdy, that was a convenient excuse. <laughs> oh, when I asked it, the, <laughs> the, the biggest saying that I say all the time to Graydon, um, which actually- Oh, you, are you gonna quote I, me again? No, I'm gonna quote myself. It, it, it's in the book yonder. Like I have proof that it was me. And I always say the hardest part of doing something is doing it. So it's just, you know, it's a matter of going, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it. And then it's gonna be over. And it's also like after, and that's the other problem with writing is see, the beginning of the story is so easy. It's getting to the part of the end is the hardest part. And then once that's done, then you have to edit, you have to market it, you have to get the cover, you have to figure out an online presence. Like it just keeps going and going. Um, but the, the thing where you actually have the book in your hand, like how tangible that is. Whenever I, I have a lot of friends that are writers too, I'll tell them when they get their books, I'm like, can you stop smelling? It's like, doesn't that smell like accomplishment? <laughs> it's, like, it's so hard. Yeah. Hmm. Now, do either of you have any questions for me? Oh, yes, absolutely. So I want to hear, um, first off, I know that your, the, the, Spirit of Creativity had started from a writing exercise uh, right. with the, the Mermaid Fingernails poem. Right. I wanted to know how you got from that poem to an entire book on poetry. Well, like I was telling somebody today, um, when I wrote that first poem, well, that, that actually was turned into what I thought was going to be a 50 word story to him, and it morphed into a poem. But I kept saying, I can't write poetry. I can't write poetry. This is rare. This voice in my head, the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, or, well, depending on how spiritual you are, um, you keep saying, the more you keep telling yourself you can't write poetry, the more you keep proving you can. And I was trying to do the, 20, the 21st Century Creative Course um, that Mark McGinnis does. I was trying to read a lesson from that. And as I was reading, this poem was coming to me. And I ended up writing three poems in one day. Are those and the ones from the seashell? I mean, the, the seaside? Yeah. OK, so yeah. It's those, those two plus the mermaid. And then now that I've published the book, I'm still not done writing poetry because I keep putting poems on my blog. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it just, I, I love that poetry just kind of happens sometimes. Like, yes. you'll just be doing something, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, that's, this is a poem right here. I, I have it now. Like, there's inspiration from so many things that we don't even think about. I know I, I talked to you personally about your singing bowl, but I, your your poems about the singing bowl were some of my favorite I've ones. Shown, I've shown this before. I won't play it because Zoom doesn't do it justice, but uh -huh. this. I want to see it. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, that is so cool. And I, I could almost like feel it resonating in me while uh, <laughs> reading that poem or reading those poems. It was mentioned quite a few times. I actually had to play that today because um, I was, I, I talked to the woman I talked to earlier. She is a very spiritual person mm -hmm. and she just inspired me to play and just listen to what the bowl, because I was at one with the bowl. I'm a very spiritual person myself, but I don't go into all the stuff that she does. But still, and it's like, I can feel the bowl telling me, you need to write from the heart. You need to let, yeah. the, let God lead you. Let your characters tell you their story, because this is deeper than you could ever imagine. Oh, I think that that's just such a beautiful thing. Uh, David mm -hmm. Lifestes, uh, which was a famous uh, psychiatrist, had said that, um, we are human beings. We're not human doings. And sometimes it's really important to pause for a second mm -hmm. and focus right. being on a being and not a doing. I also, um, read, I also read somewhere on uh, BeliefNet that we are spirits with a human experience, not, hum uh, not humans with a spiritual experience. Oh, see, that's beautiful. I love that one. We quote you all the time, by the way. I appreciate it. 
at the very end, you said when you've touched one lives, you you've touched one life, you've touched thousands. Right. Um, I keep on saying that now. Like it, it is. A, I, I give you credit when I say it. <laughs> but I think of you. We mention it all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, and I think I, how was the process of putting it together? Like, I, I'm curious as to like where you, where the cover came from, like the I formatting. Tish Bouvier, I have to give her credit for that. She was the one that created the cover. Mm -hmm. um, my friend Jen Lowry, who does the Jen Lowry Writes podcast, and she's an author herself. Mm -hmm. She helped me do the basic formatting, but then Tish did the did the formatting for the ebook and print book is formatted. I just don't have the back cover yet, so it'll probably be after the first of the year when I get that out. Okay, oh, yeah. let us know because we I totally want to get a, a paper I copy too. I, I will. I've just got to get get that together. Um, it's hard. Like it, it that all of that part, the formatting and the editing, it's kind of the same thing with audio. There is so much. I just mm -hmm. gotta have a back cover done because I got it in five by eight. I just gotta have a back cover and a, the the print cover, the PDF because I got oh, the wow. front cover and then the the back, the blurb and my picture, my logo and that kind of thing on the back. So, what was your favorite uh, poem in the spirit of creativity? Mine, mm -hmm. the um, the flow of words. Mm, that was a good one. That's the one that that. I auditioned with, with you. Auditioned, yes, and I listened to that even though I, I chose and and I was kind of like oh my gosh what am I gonna do Graydon's doing this with with Lily but I need a female voice. <laughs> I don't want you to, you to think it, I was it's like okay. down just because no it's funny though. No but, not at all. <laughs> I still listen to that audition like three or four times because I loved it so much. <laughs> Isn't it so good? Well the thing is, is that as, as partners, we are 100% supportive in the whole way. If he, he's had a couple of, of voice gigs come in and auditions and, and different sorts of things. And like, I sit in there too with him and help him with it as he does the same for me. So like, whether you took one of us or both of us, we were still both going to be involved in the process. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. So no, and it, it wasn't like it, we, we want what the client wants. So if you just wanted a female voice, that was fine. Um, I tell you a funny story. No, when I'm but that next book that you have, you better be thinking. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you planning more poetry, more poetry books? Or are you going more into the mystery? I'm going more into the fiction right now. I may, mm -hmm. I may do it um, later on because I do have some poems in my poetry book folder that I put in my blog. Then I'm uh -huh. like, wow, I just don't have enough yet. So I want to get. Um, more poems under my belt first but I'm going to share a funny story when I was a kid and I okay. know this is not half um, because I listen to even on now what is barred it's NLS talking book program mm -hmm. and I had these books on cassette and I'd be in the middle of one and I'd get another one that was done by the same narrator and my child brain go, and I know it doesn't matter because they're just narrating books but my five or 10 year old brain is like, oh my gosh, this person's going to be mad at me because I didn't finish this one first. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, his brain went there and it was so, it's funny now. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Because <laughs> they're just narrating. They don't know who reads it. <laughs> <laughs> Share that story because it was absolutely hilarious. And she I was one of my favorites back then too. <laughs> okay, Greg, do you have any questions before we get off on a tangent? <laughs> oh, uh, did I? Or did I? Ah, all my questions may have gotten answered. Hold on. Let me think. Let me think. Oh, <clears throat> ha. Hmm. What gave you the idea to do the audiobook of Spirit of Creativity? Well, I have been wanting to do that because I'm all about accessibility. And I didn't know exactly where to, to go with that. And I've also heard on podcasts that I listen to that audiobooks are on the, the market for audiobooks is on the rise, is, is bigger mm -hmm. now than what it used to be. I'm mm -hmm. thinking, you know, if I've got the ebook, but if people like audiobooks, this would absolutely be perfect. Um, so that's why. And then um, Abby Taylor, who is in my. Uh, Behind Our Eyes group, the Writers with Disabilities, and then another um, accessible world group called Writers Retreat, she forwarded us the information from um, Leonore Dvorkin, and that's when I reached out 
um, to you, Lily. Yeah, the the Dvorkins have been just fantastic. And it it's such a, a weird way that I met them. Uh, I was a waitress for a, a couple of years of my life and I met a friend of mine who had made a, uh, a, a documentary uh, called like Tony's Tale. It was about a dog uh, in Arizona. And she had a friend there from Pakistan named Ernie and we all became friends. And whenever they would come out for film festivals, I would see them. And then Ernie went back to Pakistan, but then sent me this email and said, listen, I have these friends named the Dvorkins and they do some really great things. And I think you should get in contact with them because they need uh, narrators. And so that started like five years ago and I've had a pretty long relationship with them. That's just been fantastic. I've worked with a lot of different clients with them and each, each one has such beautiful stories or memoirs or things uh, to put together. Um, so I couldn't be happier that I met them, but it, it's interesting when people do come to me through the Dvorkins. I'm like, how did you know them? I'm like, well, I have this friend in Pakistan. <laughs> it's like, which is just <laughs> out, of, out of the blue, random story. Um, no, but uh, the, the audio books of that, and I know, and we've already experienced this too as duet partners uh, and even solo. We've had a lot of people reach out um, with different kinds of disabilities and or sickness or times in their life where they feel really alone. And they will just write emails upon emails about how, how much it filled the void for them or it gave them so much hope during that time or something else to think about. And that really is what makes it all worthwhile is this, the stories of that. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So, so did... How, how was that? I'll ask you the question of how was the process of working with a very complicated uh, female narrator? Complicated? Complicated? <laughs> I'm just I was joking, like I was, I was really hard to work with. No. <laughs> I'm actually you looking forward to some tips. We, do what? I said, I'm looking forward for, to hearing some tips about dealing with this one. Mm. Oh, please. This is that you, you <laughs> get a life here. We're not going to. Uh, we're not gonna just stop talking just because we're done with the audiobook. See, see, do you see this? This is my soul sister right here. <laughs> <laughs> She's got my back. So, um, I'm trying to think of the other Christian things. Christian audiobook narrators as well. That, that's a plus on my part. Do you see that? See that? I, I'm just, we're just winning. We are just winning. <laughs> it's a win win all around. Complicated have, my foot. <laughs> have you had much? Feedback on the audiobook. Like, I know it hasn't been out very long, but I was kind of yeah, curious. I, I did give a couple of codes to a friend for her newsletter. I'm going to send mm -hmm. a couple of codes to another friend. Um, I haven't, I mean, I need to get out, do some promotion, but like I said, I, last week was crazy. Yeah, yeah I think right now in 2020, there's just going to be weird weeks of stuff that we're not expecting that just comes mm -hmm. up. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I'll put, I'll put it out there and this will help get it out. And then I just did a podcast or the solo today where I put the audiobook trailer up there, um, which basically it took the video and extracted the audio from it to do the audiobook sample. So people get a sample of that too, which is- Oh, that's, that's awesome. For a second, I thought something went wrong. I was like, oh no. <laughs> then I was like, oh wait, this is a good thing. <laughs> no, Anchor will take the, the upload, the video, they say video uploads are supported. And what they mm -hmm. do is when they, before they upload it, they, they take the MP4, they extract the video, and then they upload the audio and process oh. it. Oh, very cool. Yeah, they extract yeah. the audio. It's something new that they've done. So it's an anchor technique. They, they do the behind the scenes stuff. I don't have to worry about all that. Yeah. <laughs> right. So before I end the interview segment of this, um, where can people find you online? And that's another thing I need you to send me to as the links for the show notes. Really oh, sure. Um, I have uh, my website, uh, our website. Ooh. I was waiting to see if I made you mad. Um, it's lillianeves.com. I'll definitely get the spelling for you, but that's L-I-L-L-I-A-N-Y-V-E-S.com. Uh, and there you can see... Uh, all the, all the different stuff that we're up to. Um, we've been doing uh, the writing challenges for the NYC Midnight. We've been recording those in audio. So there's a lot of mini little stories there as well. Uh, some testimonials from clients. Uh, it, it's a, and there's also a contact me. So if you want to contact us, it's all right there. 
Oh, sorry, the page says contact me, I think. So that's what I'm saying. Still? I'm, I'm oh making my it goodness. sound like <laughs> Oh, I am putting myself. Anybody out there is looking for a narration partner. I might be on the market soon. (laughs) That's not true. No, it's at all. (laughs) (laughs) Also on the website, you can see all the things that we've already done. Mm -hmm. Our 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 catalogs of audiobooks, as well as what we're working on now, what's coming soon, what's coming a little bit later. Because, as as we've alluded to, we're really busy. It's great. It's fantastic. Wonderful. It is blessed. It is also. Oh my goodness, we have so much to do. so much work <laughs> that's okay it's a problem to have well there's a website where they have voice sam- you get audio samples on another website too right uh yeah we're, we're up on uh acx uh yeah. acx.com is the audiobook creative exchange and it is uh sort of a matchmaking marketplace for rights holders who have books that need narrators and narrators slash producers like us who uh, are looking for projects to do. Mm. Uh, and the nice thing about it is it handles all of the contractual uh, paperwork for the entire process. And so the rights holder can just focus on their writing or uh, reviewing audio as it comes to them. The narrator producers can just focus on creating audio. Uh, it, it simplifies the process immensely. Uh, and so, yeah, you can also find us there. That's- Storytellers Smitten by yeah, Audio. We, yeah, we're, we are Storytellers Smitten by Audio. You can find us on ACX under that. Um, yeah, or, or LillianEves.com. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know you're on Facebook. Well, I don't know if you have a page. But... Oh, yeah, we do have a Facebook page. In fact, uh, it says Lillian Eves and Vincent Lee Grayson. So we, we have a fan, a fan page on Facebook. Uh, which is just, it's just, I'm just now starting to update it more regularly because we've been so busy, but I'm trying and and Vincent's trying every week or so to actually drop something about what's coming up or what our newest project is, or like sometimes we share uh, mess ups or goofs or outtakes from the audio, from the studio. There are a few of those. (laughs) No, bloopers, 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 I love those. Yeah. Oh yeah. We have so many. (laughs) <laughs> okay anything we let you guys like to add before i end the interview segment because i'm going to do a separate segment for the book launch because um for one i want to put the promo and the audiobook trailer in between on the podcast for two mm-hmm. the book launch is going to be a separate video so is there anything else you guys okay. like well, to add before I-, I would say that we are just charmed to be here that we had so much fun reading the spirit of creativity and so many smiles and moments of going, ah, and I'm just absolutely thrilled that, uh, that we found, that we found each other, all of us. Yeah. We were able to actually do this and now it's available and, and you can share the experience. Yeah. Thank you for trusting us with the spirit of creativity and thank you for bringing us here today. And I still appreciate you being a part of this. So everyone, Inspirational Journeys will be back in a moment. For those of you watching on YouTube, Stay tuned for the book launch video coming next.